All right, we are live. Hello, 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 party people in the house, right? Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, how are you, Keith Norris? I am doing fantastic, JMO. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. In fact, I think you might be killing it. I don't know why. I am. <laughs> I am, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Well, it is Friday, which you know, is lovingly referred to these days as Groundhog Day. <laughs> Every day we wake up, it's still the election. Just it in is. case you're watching far and wide, folks, it's still the election, right? Oh, my gosh. Well, I am so excited today. We have a super special Killing It Collective with my really, really good friend from way back in the day. Should we even dare tell them how long we've known each other, Keith? I don't uh, know. Let's just say um, <clears throat> 80s music was in vogue. Can we can we say that? Yes, we'll just say 80s music was rocking the house back in the day, but we go way back. I know we don't look like it, but that's because we live such a healthy lifestyle, which is exactly what we're going to be talking to you about today. So are you ready, Keith? Yes, let's do it. All right, let's get this party started. Just hold one moment. Damn, look at that. Look at that. Wow. I actually almost look professional. Almost. <laughs> almost. Right? Hey, That's Carrie. We got Carrie <laughs> Arbutina in the house. It's good What's to up, see Carrie? you. Good to see you, Carrie. So we are here today coming to you live uh, to not talk about the election at all. In fact, we're going to pivot the other way, right? Because we got to leave all that negative craziness in the in somewhere else. Because we've got an amazing event coming up uh, that a little birdie told me about, or a couple of birdies told me about, or a lot of birdies have told me about. And before we kind of get into that, let's talk a little bit about you, Keith Norris, and why you're such a badass. Even though you're not just badass because you and I went to high school together. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just a few years ago. Just a few years ago. A few years even though ago. I have to tell the audience, right, that even though Keith is so sweet and always says, oh, yeah, Jennifer and I were friends in high school. We were not friends in high school. I admired Keith from afar in high school. We all worshipped Keith in high school. He was two years older than me and like a rock star in fitness already. He was like a star football player, but he also always, always, which there was a lot of football players that talked the talk about fitness back then because you're a high schooler. But Keith, you've pretty much always walked the walk, right? Yeah, I have. Yeah. And it's just, you know, health and wellness is something that I've just, uh, I've just always loved. I've always had an affinity for, and I've always, I've always been pretty good at it for whatever reason. I mean, it just always made sense to me. And, uh, you know, Jennifer, thank you for the kind words. Um, but I was an athlete, especially when I got to college, that I had to figure out how to how to train and take care of myself to play with the more naturally gifted players that I that I then, you know, was was up against I, playing with and playing against. So I really had to I had to up my game so that I could stay on the field with these guys. So now. So do you really feel like that's when you really started taking an interest in health and wellness? Because back in that day, you couldn't just jump on Google and look up, Hey, how do I get in better shape than all the, the rest of the, the guys I'm facing on the field? Yeah, I was, you know, I was very lucky for one thing. I happened to go to a gym in San Antonio, a uh, powerhouse gym. Jennifer, did you ever go to powerhouse? Oh my gosh. Yes. Back in okay. the day. I think day. everyone, everyone <laughs> at Tom C. Clark high school, as well as any high school in the North side school district went to, went yeah. to there, right? Well, what a lot of people don't know about Powerhouse Gym was it was at, it, at its time, if you knew the people to ask and the people to to get around, because you could obviously go into the other crowd very easily, which was fun, too, but for a different reason. But there was a very, very knowledgeable crowd there that knew about training, knew about nutrition, knew about all of these things. Um, and 
you know, and they were 10, 20 years older, they knew the ropes and they were more than willing to hand down information, which was totally cool. And so I was just a sponge during that time. I picked yeah. up everything that I could and put it to use. Wow. Well, we've got somebody who can corroborate our story right here. Shannon Ford. Shannon, my girlfriend. How's it going? Oh my gosh. We love us some Shannon Ford. Yes. Shannon Canavan to us back in high school, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. we got JR on here too. So good to see you on here, JR. He's he's a badass. JR is awesome. So glad you're you're here today with us. I know you're killing it wherever you are, JR. All right. So you're, you're going to powerhouse gym. You're doing all those great things. What was next for you after high school? I know the story, but share with the audience. Yeah. So I went, uh, played, uh, football at Southwest Texas state, which is now Texas state on a football scholarship. Um, played for a few years there, then suffered a, a devastating knee injury and a knee injury that I couldn't recover from. And, uh, so in in one play, I went from my end all be all all eggs in one basket of being a professional athlete to not having that avenue left to me whatsoever. Um, that was completely taken away. I didn't know it immediately, but uh, within a couple of weeks, it was it was pretty obvious there was going to be no coming back. Um, it completely destroyed my knee. Knee had to be rebuilt. It was kind of a freak, uh, a freak injury. But you know those things happen. Playing yeah. football. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I had to have my my knee. You know, for in this is <clears throat> the mid '80s. Um, you know, the the uh, technology back then wasn't what it is now. Um, had that injury happened now, I probably probably would have still been playing. But as it was at that time, that there was just no coming back from that type of injury. It was an MCL, ACL, both ligaments ruptured at the same time. So um, had knee surgery, recovered from that as best I could. Um, really was in a uh, emotional uh turmoil at that time because I had lost uh, it, every identity I had. Like I said, it was a, all eggs in one basket, right? It was, it was focus and, you know, no, no plan B, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so I, I did the next thing that I knew that I could do um, that would both allow me to use what physical abilities I had and, you know, whatever shallow mental abilities I had at that time. Yeah. Um, and I, I went, you've <laughs> always been very smart, Keith. I remember that about you. Well, sure. I, it, I wasn't necessarily book smart. Um, and I, and, and really I didn't, I didn't become a student until I got to college and I, and I kind of flowered as a, as, as a student there because I was taught a different way of learning and yeah. that's a whole other story. But I was, I was challenged by professors to actually give them what I thought and not, you know, re just regurgitate. And they wanted, and I happened to be in a political science program that was, was that was a very good program for its time at, at uh, Southwest Texas State. And they wanted debate. They they encouraged people to debate. They encouraged people to come up with their own ideas. It was a, it was a great learning experience. Um, wow. Anyway, I, I took that into the military and had a great nine year. Uh, career in the military, um, had a chance to go to uh, JAG school in the military. Wow. Uh, which is, uh, which is the military's version of law school. Uh, finished my degree in the military, had an opportunity to go to JAG school and I turned it down. Um, wow. and the, the reason I turned it down is I had friends um, who had, who I had gone to college with, who had then uh, gone on to law school and now they're out actually practicing law in firms. And they told me, you know, Hey, you might want to think twice about this. It's not what you think it is. Right. Um, and so I, and so I didn't go. Um, and it was, you know, that's one of those forks in the road that you, that you always wonder, I wonder what would have happened if, I wonder what would have happened if, um, but anyway, I didn't do that. Uh, left the military after nine years because it was hard on a uh, family life. By that time, I had two two kids um, who are now old enough to realize when when dad was getting ready to go on deployment, which I was deployed constantly during that time. And uh, it, it was just too much. It's it's tough on family life to uh, to deploy all the time. And this was right at the end of the, the Cold War. The wall had just come down and we were deployed constantly um, in Europe. 
So fast forward, uh, I went into the pharmaceutical industry that JMO knows so well. Fist bump. <laughs> Fist bump. Uh, went into the pharmaceutical industry because number one, I could make some serious money and I was tired of being broke. So you were a, you were a legal drug dealer, like I was. I was, I was a legal drug dealer. Um, Although there's lots of legal drugs now, as of a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, just depends right? on where you live. Yeah, um, exactly. So yeah, I went Not into the pharmaceutical. Living in Oregon, I hear. Yeah, so, yeah. I went into the uh, went into the pharmaceutical industry um, and uh, quality control, and I, I essentially was a liaison between the pharmaceutical manufacturer and the FDA to try to make try to make peace between both of those camps, which was, um, that was a law degree by practice. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I did that for, uh, did that for 17 years. And then, uh, Michelle, my wife and I decided that, uh, we had not left the American dream, but the American dream left us and we were going, going to go out and make it on our own and become entrepreneurs. And, uh, that's what we did. We just, yeah. And you know, and it's so funny. Like I, I laugh at that because you know, I'm an entrepreneur also. And it's so funny how entrepreneurs tell the story and then they're like, and then I just went out and became an entrepreneur. Like, which you know? is a fancy way of saying, man, I had to figure some shit out. Right. <laughs> All the time. And it All is daily, daily, <laughs> daily, still figuring it out. Right. Uh, you were even my guinea pig today for my little intro yes. video. My brain. You know, we're just like, yeah, let it yeah. fly. We'll see what happens. We'll figure yeah. out how to get done. In fact, guys, if you just jumped on, I mean, Renata, first of all, it's so good to see you here. We've got even Loray coming here from uh, Seattle. So it's good, to, so good to see you guys. Yeah, if y'all get a chance, watch it on replay. Go all the way back and give me your thoughts on my intro video. There's one picture on there I didn't like with my little hair in the way. But okay, so so with all that being said, before we kind of get into the entrepreneurial part and you and Michelle and and everything, you really title yourself a habit change expert, right? So, and and that's what I love about you. You are literally the guru of habit change. And do you feel like all of that was really established in the military or through football, or is it a compilation of both? You've shared some pretty mind blowing things about habits for sure. Yeah. So maybe give our audience a, a real quick little piece because. You know, we're going to get into Paleo Effects shortly, your virtual event coming up. And this is going to be a space where people can learn more about that and how to have healthier habits, uh, really have a healthier lifestyle overall and not make it just a short term diet where, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to Cancun in you know, three months. Or for some of you watching that we know, some friends of ours are in Cancun right now. Um, but, you know, tell us about that. Tell us about the habit side of what you do. Yeah, well. I really got interested in it in, in college. So um, I studied political science, minor in psychology. Um, and there was a set of coaches at Southwest Texas State at that time. And there's a lot of reasons why all this came to be at, at Southwest Texas at that time. A lot of reasons. Um, but they had one of the best coaching staffs anywhere in the state had assembled at Texas State. And they recruited like no other school could during that time. And, and they were competing with division one schools. And this was at that time, a division uh, two double A, which is um, it, it, not to confuse everybody, but it's not a division one school. Right. Um, so they had to, they, they really had to hone their chops at recruiting. And when, when they recruited me, I was like ready to sign up. Right right then, even though it was in a division one school and I was being recruited by division one schools. Right. Um, and their method of coaching was like nothing I had ever seen. Somehow they had figured out a way to coach each kid in a team individually. Oh, so wow. they knew this kid, this kid needed a rah, rah guy. This kid needed, you know, kid gloves. This kid needed this, this kid needed that. And it was like, they were just doing it intuitively. And at the same time, I was, uh, like I say, I was studying psychology and it occurred to me that they are saying, doing, acting in some kind of way that is getting, I didn't know really the term at the time, but compliance when I look back on it now. Right. Um, what, and, and I started to question, what was it that they are doing and that they're doing so much better than anybody else? 
Well, and if you pin that right there, you know, now, I mean, good goodness, the, the mindfulness space, the mindset space right. is a billion dollar space right now, yeah. right? I was just listening to a guy the other day, um, Trevor Mawad. He wrote a book, It Takes What It Takes. And he was on Impact Theory with Tom Bellew. And he was a performance coach, uh, primarily in the NCAA, mm -hmm. worked with teams like Alabama, did some NFL stuff too. But I mean, that stuff back in that day was not very prevalent. So, right. so having that edge, um, really working with you guys one-on-one -on, -one on habits and mindset really you're saying gave you guys the edge. It did. It, it yeah. gave us all the edge. And, and I, and, and so I, I, st I studied that it became an interest of mine. What was it that they were doing? I understood that it was a uh, somehow psychologically they were warming into each person as I've come to understand it. Now it is presenting information to a person that prompts compliance and everybody is different. Everybody's a little bit different. You can generalize people in about eight different buckets, but within those eight different buckets, everybody is different. Now, the problem with coaching as we, as we encounter it now is coaches tend to coach the way they were coached. Right. The way it made sense to them. And if you look at the eight different broad buckets, the, the, the people who are a athletes or people who change given given any kind of input whatsoever just because they want to better themselves is the smallest bucket right is the smallest bucket and it comprises about 8% of the population that means all the coaches out there are targeting their message and their coaching to 8% they're losing 92% of the other people out there and it's not because they're bad coaches they're just presenting the information to their client wrong. Right, right. And, and that's really, and, and so the trick is, JMO, how do I how do I switch my message around to deliver it to you th so that it fires you up? Right. And maybe, and maybe you are part of that small 8% bucket. And if so, that's easy. That's, that's an easy win because all I have to do is give you information. Hey, Jennifer, can I tell you that uh, smoking causes cancer? How about let's quit smoking? And you're like, I'm in. What do I have to do? Right. But that doesn't I, happen for most people, but right? That does not happen for most people. They and, keep telling know. me I shouldn't drink wine. It's got a lot of sugar in it and causes inflammation. <laughs> and for some reason, I can't hear that message. <laughs> and, and now some people get this intuitively. And I think that the coaches at, at Texas State at the time happened, they, they probably it did a couple of it, but they probably got it intuitively, just like Phil Jackson with the uh, with the '90s um, Bulls back in the. He just got it intuitively. Yeah, he understood it. Each one of those players had to be pushed in a different way. Yes. Um, and some coaches get it intuitively, but everybody can learn it. It's like a musical instrument. I'm never, never gonna be the guy on stage playing a piano. I can guarantee it. But if I tried, I could at least play the piano. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Everybody yeah. can at least, there's going to be people who get it intuitively and they're rock stars at it, but everybody coaches, especially can get better at it. Yes. Jamo, this is the same when we were in the pharmaceutical industry. What is the, what is the number one thing with patients and pharmaceuticals, it's compliance. Compliance. Yeah. You cannot get them to actually take the medication regularly. They're better at giving medication to their pets than they are taking it themselves. And that's a messaging issue. That is. Well, in the case of where we're at right now with paleo and, you know, even with ID Life, another movement we're involved in, I mean, I guess I'm kind of glad patients aren't always compliant with their medication. Well, Maybe no. they'll try some health and wellness instead. Right. Uh, but the, but the yeah. same, but the same works with, with know, um, right. supplements, right? It's how do I yeah. coach compliance? How yeah. do I get you to actually comply and do what you know you need to do? And you know you need to do it, but you just need someone to pull you along, someone to help you out, someone to get that flywheel of habit rolling. Once the flywheel set, you're good to go, but somebody's got to get it going for you. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. So all right. So uh, that it was some awesome insight. So take us like, let's pick back up to where, okay, now you and Michelle became entrepreneurs. What sort of led you to the space that you're in now um, so that we can kind of get to the, to the good <laughs> stuff. And I encourage right. you guys to hang in 
uh, because I'm sure Keith, maybe, maybe we can talk him into giving us maybe some freebies or some, some, some free stuff. I'm all into free stuff. I'm quite from, sure. Uh, yeah. From, <laughs> uh, sure. from their brand, because I'm not joking, even though Keith and I seem very like, you know, like friendly and down to earth, I really have the utmost respect and almost all of you, Keith, at the empire you guys have built with paleo and the lives that you've changed and the rock stars you hang around with. I mean, the Josh axes and the, the Mark Sissons of the world, the Rob Wolfs, um, people that you hear a lot in the health and wellness space, Dr. Mercola, um, all these guys, you guys run in those circles and are part of many of their inner circles, uh, Bo, Bo Eason and all these guys. So I really um, want to get to that, but first let, let first things first, how, you know, and especially for entrepreneurs that are listening, mm -hmm. that's really what Killing It Collect is all about. So here you are, you find yourself facing the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Where did it go from there? Well, first of all, for, for entrepreneurs out there or people who are thinking about being entrepreneurs, there is no best time to start. The best time to start was yesterday. And yeah. I don't care what economic climate it is. I don't care if you don't have everything in place. You never will be economically ready. You never will have everything in place. Nothing is ever going to be perfect. And mm -hmm. I can say this, Michelle and I became entrepreneurs coming out of the housing crisis of 2008 when we lost just about everything. Oh, yeah. Every, so many people every, said, right? Every bit of money that we thought that we were going to have to fall back on for a couple of years until we got this entrepreneurial thing started evaporated just about overnight, evaporated. Wow. Um, and then add to that, um, you know, we lost our daughter in an auto accident. Oh, so yeah. we had, you know, so there is no good. And I'm not saying that to, to garner sympathy or anything. That's just that's just the realities of life. Things are going to happen. So if you're waiting for the perfect time, there is no perfect time. And, and let's park it there for just a brief second. And I know um, at least right now I'm scheduled to talk to your wife, Michelle, mm -hmm. on Monday. And um, we can probably dig a little more into that about losing Brittany. But I do feel like even in, in, in the times that we're talking in right now with so much uncertainty and and um, depending on you know who you talk to, everybody's been thrown a curveball in 2020, right? <laughs> in some way or another, you know, people have family members impacted by COVID. They've been impacted by the shutdowns, things like that. You guys were impacted in such a huge way when Brittany passed away. You know, um, just really days before her 23rd birthday, correct? Right. Yeah. And um, and you know, yeah, things get in the way mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, but that, that's a pretty big thing. Yeah. But I. I know on my end of things, and I know you and Michelle really line up with this, is that you can either let things like that paralyze you or propel you, right? right. And in your case, you really let it propel you. So let, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so it did propel us. Um, you know, Brittany changed many, many lives in her short dance here on earth. Um, she was a very gifted, um, she was a gifted musician. She was, she was uh, gifted at, at ministry, um, neither of which are, are any attributes that Michelle and I have. Um, yeah. And so we thought we wanted to do something in the entrepreneurial space that would carry her legacy on. And we thought, what, well, what gifts do we have? I mean, we don't, we don't have any gifts that we can turn into like an entrepreneurial enterprise. And we really spun our wheels for a while. And then we thought, you know, there's a couple things that we do have. I don't know if they're gifts or, or whatever, but we have the gift of health and wellness. We happen to know that space very well. And we know people. We, we, for whatever reason, we have just always been very, very good connectors. I personally, and I think I, I can speak for Michelle. We've never been an expert in anything, but we know the experts. Yeah. And so if we ever needed to know at an expert level about anything, they were a phone call away. Now we so were. How, so how did you meet those experts? Because you hear that a lot with CEOs and founders of companies and even billionaires. They'll say, oh, I, I'm not smart. I just built a team of people who are a lot smarter than I was. So as an entrepreneur, you think to yourself, okay, well, how did you find those people? And how did you get to them and get access to them and bring them into your world? You know what I did, <laughs> JMO, and it, it bleeped me out. If, if this, 
I had the balls to actually call people. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you, you would be, <laughs> you would be surprised. They actually, they receive so few direct either text phone calls or one degree away. You know, JMO, do you know yeah. so-and-so? Can you put me in touch with, they receive so few of those actually because people are scared to death to actually reach out because they're, they're afraid of, um, uh, being, you know, rebuffed or, or, or something like, and we have never been, I will ask anybody anything. And I am not afraid to be taught by anybody either. If I don't, I'm not an expert in anything, really. I am a great synthesizer of information, right? but I'm not an expert in anything. I can synthesize like hell, but yeah. I am not the, you know, I am, uh, what do they call, there's a difference between a hedgehog and a fox. <laughs> I haven't heard this one. So the, so the hedgehog knows one thing very, very deeply. And the fox knows a lot of things, but very surface level. Yes. So I'm a fox. <laughs> and, and the world needs both foxes and hedgehogs to get is, to go around. That uh, is so awesome. I, but I am not a hedgehog. I am a fox. And I just know the experts. Yeah. And we just, you know, over time built associations and friendships just by asking people and having conversations with them. And it just yeah. snowballed. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, first of all, I got to say shout out to Larry. Larry, thank you so much for sharing this out. I appreciate you, man. You're oh, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much. And you even got Chad over here uh, already shouting you out. Chad. Uh, effects. Yeah. Oh, man. yeah. That's yeah. the hardest working guy I know right there. Yeah, Chad and Carrie. I was just on the phone with Carrie prior to our, our interview. She's an awesome, awesome lady. So, um, okay. So, so you kind of surrounded yourself with these, these team, this team of experts and you went full, full throttle towards the, uh, health and wellness space. What made you, you guys choose paleo? Um, that was what we thought could help the most people. And it was the most accessible, easy thing for people to grasp. Um, and we, we, so we looked at it as a big lever, right? It, it's what, what are, what are the few levers that you can pull to make the most change? Right. And diet and fitness done the right way are two of the biggest levers. If you have right. those two things dialed in, you're, you're far, far ahead of anybody else. And you are much, much healthier than your prior self. Right. Now, dial it in a little bit more than that. We we say that there's seven pillars to to health and wellness, but the big two, diet and exercise. If you get those dialed in, the rest is just commentary. After yeah. that, it's just twisting yeah. around the edges. Uh, but those two are hugely important, which is why when you came to us with ID Life and we looked at ID Life and saw how awesome it was, because believe me, we were hit daily. By this time, we've already got Paleo FX up and running, and we were hit on the daily with yeah. supplements and to push this supplement and that supplement. And we believed that there was a place for supplementation, and we had not before ID Life found supplementation that was of high quality and was done properly. Yeah. And well, yeah, you guys were definitely my phone a friend, and I, you know, just to poke holes in the nutrition when I heard about it. But I was shocked uh, when you guys said you were ready to get on board because. I really do think that a lot of people think paleo is really all about the food that, mm -hmm. that you can get everything you need from food. And so, you know, maybe talk some, some about that because there are misnomers around the paleo lifestyle that, you know, the caveman diet, right. uh, that it's a diet or, you know, what have you. So maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So first of all, let's talk about the, the quote unquote paleo diet, which is really a big tent enterprise. I mean, right now, keto happens to be, you know, the diet that's that's on fire and everybody's excited about. That happens to fall under the paleo umbrella. Um, but we even have friends who are vegan paleo. And, yeah. and you wonder, how can, how can that be if paleo is an all meat diet? It's not. <laughs> it's not. These are yeah. these confusing things that people that, that have been thrown out that, that people confuse themselves with. Really, if you pull it all back, the paleo diet is nothing more than eating whole, real food, eliminating sugar and eliminating grains, and for most people, eliminating dairy. Right. 
right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then from that very, very basic template, you start fine tuning it, just like I do nutrition. You start fine tuning it to the person, which is so liberating because my paleo diet doesn't have to look like your paleo diet, JMO. Yeah. As long as it works for you, it works. Yeah. And if it's real food, it works. And that's what was mind blowing was when I remember when I really started to kind of dig in with you guys to paleo, you know, you had some paleo people that did dairy, others who didn't, others that were very, you know, because it's really anything found, so to speak, in the paleolithic era. So right. there were still a lot of people into um, vegetables and, you know, things like that, fruits and, and so, you know, nuts, seeds you know, it wasn't all right. meat. And that's right. what a lot of people thought it was, you know, bacon with a side of bacon, um, <laughs> you know, back in the day, I think yeah. I used to tease you about that. Right. <laughs> so, um, so that leads us to paleo effects. Now, you know, I, I have to say, and I have to give you guys a little bit of a shout out here. Um, you know, I got to admit, cause I've known Keith and Michelle, here's where I give my testimony about paleo effects because I've known Keith and Michelle, like I said, since high school, and I'll be real transparent with you guys. When I first heard about paleo, I really thought, oh, that's kind of a fringe thing or it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a diet. And they kept inviting me to this event that at the time was annually uh, held and will hopefully be again um, live event in Austin, Texas. And it took me a couple of years to finally show up at one. And when I did, I was blown away. Um, first of all, because Michelle and Keith were like, the Jay-Z and Beyonce um, <laughs> of this whole event. And it was literally like, you know, anytime I told anybody I knew them from high school and if they even said hello to me and somebody witnessed it, it was like, they were like, oh my gosh, they said hello to you. What does that feel like? You know, and they just worship you guys. But I met New York Times bestselling authors. I met um, world-class athletes that many of you would know or have seen documentaries on, on ESPN or uh, through prevention or other big health platforms. Um, I saw scientists, doctors, uh, you know, it was, it was almost like a shopping event, you know, which at the time I was like, woohoo, shopping. Yeah. And someone said shopping. <laughs> um, and so I was going around getting all this free stuff back then. Collagen was brand new. Nobody really heard of it. I remember that's when I really started getting on collagen. I was using uh, vital proteins gave me like right. a whole hub for free back then. Um, which now they're, you know, they've gone to the dark side with Nestle and I'm using ID life collagen, but, um, but it really introduced me to a lot of things that I didn't even know were available and not just in food, in technology, in exercise, uh, because at the heart of it all were workouts and things like that. So fast forward to 2019, you guys, if, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, had over 8,500 people right. attend your three day event there in Austin, Texas. In fact, you took up the entire Palmer Convention Center, not only inside, but outside. Yep. I, I rode a camel, <laughs> saying, y'all, rode a camel. <laughs> there was a vendor there selling camel's milk. Yes, camel's milk. And ironically, it's very good. Camel's milk, camel fat. Um, I know it's weird, but it's really good. You know? um, yeah. And, and, you know, there were float spas and there the human charger was there where they shine light in your ears and you know, it wakes you up without sunlight. It's good, the craziest stuff, but it's so awesome. Dry Farm Wines, Epic Bars was there, Thrive Market, Bulletproof, who, if I'm not mistaken, Dave Asprey is, is almost like a supporting partner of you guys with Paleo Effects. So if you guys have read the Bulletproof Diet. So, I mean, things were rocking. And then the Rona hit. In so, the Rona. Yeah. yeah. Good old Rona. We love her. Said no one ever. <laughs> she, she's like that. She's like that overly drunk two tan woman from, from something about Mary and you just want her to leave the party, right. uh, but she just keeps coming back. Uh, but anyway, so you've had to go virtual this year and I'm super excited about it. It's next weekend. Um, and so talk a little bit about that. What's that going to look like for you guys? Yeah, next yeah. Saturday, the the uh, 14th, it's going to be an all-day event. Um, we'll have 60 speakers. Um, you mentioned Dave Asprey. Dave Asprey will be there. Um, we were talking about uh, mindset and habit change. Jim Quick will will be there as well. Oh, wow. uh, we were talking the keto diet just a little while ago. And so uh, Luis Villasenor and um, uh, Ben Azadi will be, will be in talking about the keto diet. And like I say... 60 other 
people and it runs the gamut of diet, exercise, and then everything else that we say encompasses health and wellness. And that's, you know, everything from the, uh, from the emotional level, the financial side of things, uh, the relational side of things, the tribal community aspect, all of that. And we'll have speakers on all of that as well. So it's not just a diet expo. And that's, I think that's one of the things in Jennifer that probably surprised you whenever you came to Paleo FX was it was not just a diet conference. It was so much more. Um, so much more. Yeah, it was it was it was really mind blowing. In fact, I think we were all joking around. I know we were on kind of this big group text, a bunch of us that had attended and we were saying, is there any way we could just live there at Paleo Effects? Because we had everything we needed. I mean, you got uh, coaching, uh, you had exercise, you had the greatest and healthiest foods. Uh, there was even alcohol there, dry farm okay. wines, which was, you know, really great. Caveman vodka was there, mm -hmm. um, you know, just lots of great stuff. It was like its own little utopia almost. So nobody wanted to leave. Um, so, yeah, that's awesome that you guys are going to replicate that for the for the virtual event as much as possible. Right. And I, and I think, you know, for people, your health is your wealth. Right. And I and I know we're going through this election season right now and it's driving everybody crazy. It's driving me crazy, too. But here's the one thing I know. No matter who wins, they're not looking out for your health. You have to look out for your own health, your health, your family's health, your friend's health. That's on you. Right. And it's it, it's pretty easy once you get, you know, a few things dialed in. But it really is on you. No one else. No, there's no outside entity that's going to come save you from poor health. It's got to be, it's got to be you. Um, and really, and, really everybody's health should matter now more than, more than ever. Absolutely. I mean, I mean if the, anything, the science is out there, I mean, even, you know, when, when, when the president famously got Corona, right. uh, they put him on a regimen in addition to the other things he was taking of vitamin D and zinc and glutathione and, and on and on. And so we now know mm -hmm. the importance of good supplementation of, of being as healthy as possible uh, because unfortunately, a lot of the people that have succumbed to this and and any viruses we may face in the future, you want to be as strong in your immune system right. and in your body as you can be. Right. And this is this is no different than, uh, you know, what happens every flu season. Jennifer, look who succumbs to the flu. Yeah. Elderly and people who have comorbidities. Exactly. Right? So and. In, it's really that way for everything. It, I mean, for everything. Even, even even with heart disease, you know, I was a cardiovascular yeah. specialty rep for 15 years in pharma, as you know, and and the 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 first step of the AHA guidelines from the American Heart Association is what they call TLC, total lifestyle change, which yeah. they really want physicians to start with diet and exercise. Um, unfortunately, sometimes they refer to the good old government food pyramid, which we could do a whole nother live just on that. That is why everybody needs to come to Paleo FX and jump on the virtual. Get the real info that's really going to help you. Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. In fact, yeah. In fact, I would say that uh, for anybody watching, if you're a little concerned about this, uh, how did Biden say it? The dark winter that we're headed into right. uh, with the Rona. Uh, and if anybody's seen the trailer for Songbird, which was a little mind blowing, uh, which is supposed to be COVID-23. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you might want to jump on Paleo Effects' virtual next weekend and um, and soak up some info on health and wellness. I know, yeah. I know, yeah, that, that would be huge. And seriously, it's not a scare tactic. I mean, if it's not the Rona, it's going to be something else, right? Yeah. What, whether yeah. it's uh, another... Uh, virulent virulent strain of flu, whether it's, uh, you know, it, Tuber uh, tuberculosis kills a hundred thousand people a year. <laughs> yeah. still. So, I mean, I mean, anything you can do to keep yourself healthier, there's yes. a reason when you go in to go get a, you know, your shots at the doctor, they always test you for TB or, you know, you still get tetanus shots or what have you. I mean, you've really got to um, take charge of your health now more than ever. And, totally. and and I think your platform, Keith, you and Michelle that you've built is really, really, truly right place, right time for sure. And, it can, and, and health can be fun. I'm just saying we just, Jennifer, we just had a blast in Florida over yeah. July 4th. Oh my gosh. We had so much fun. Yes. And we, and 
We biked everywhere. Here's right. the hilarious thing. My trainer was worried about me for a number of reasons. Number one, because I think we had like 19 people, but we were socially distanced because the house was like some <laughs> ridiculous square footage. Like none of us could afford this home in real time. Uh, it was, you know, a shiny ball. I don't know if you like Not yet. Not yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if you like Jonathan Crist or John Crist or whatever his name is. He did this whole thing about when rich people are dealing with COVID, but um, <laughs> it's hilarious. And one of them was escaping to it, their second home in Alice Beach. And all I could think of was, or escaping to your $16,000 a week home in Seagrove Beach. Um, right. We were all social distance, but we, we were riding bikes every day. We were outside in the sunshine every day. We were walking. We were um, really paying attention at our meals, you know, to our health as best we could and getting fresh air and salt water and um, positive mindset from each other and, and all of that. And it's just, it makes a huge, huge, huge difference. So um, yeah, I love that. I love that. So what else um, can you tell us about paleo this year? Like the, some of the speakers, I know you mentioned Dave Asprey, um, you mentioned um, a few others, anybody else that you left out that, that you think would, would wow some folks and maybe some of the topics they're talking about. You know, the, the, the big ones that I am really, really so excited about because of the mindset thing, Jim quick. And I, I know I mentioned him already, but yeah. Jim quick to me gets it. He gets mindset. He gets, uh, he gets how to leverage the mind for the, for the maximum benefit. And he gets how to motivate people. And to me, that is so very important. And, and really right now, um, I'm also super, super stoked. We've been working with uh, Deb and Brandon Yeager with Yeager Training. Um, and that is another aspect of uh, of coaching that I think that I think coaches really, really need to understand. Um, they teach a style of NLP, and I understand that NLP can get a gets a bad name a lot of times because it's seen of seen as manipulative. And you know, anything can be manipulative. Any kind of marketing can be manipulative. But if you have a message that comes from the heart. Wouldn't you want to know how to deliver that message so most people can get it and understand it and act on it? And that is what I'm all about. So, and I used to have an ick factor about marketing too. I used to have an ick factor about money, but I yeah. came to realize that the better I am at marketing, the more I get to spread my message. And my message comes from the heart. Yeah. So the better I am at that the better other people are. The more money I have, the bigger bullhorn I get to build the spread, the, the word of health and wellness. That's so that's, that's the way I look at it now. Um, and I get it. I have been there. I've been the guy who, who had the ick factor around money and marketing and all that. So I understand that point of view. What I would say is look at this a different way. Look at the kind of bullhorn you can build if you're good at, at speaking, if you're good at marketing, and if you're really good at accumulating this energy that we call money, you can change the world with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen, Chad Pettinger. Right. <laughs> right? Amen. And I mean, Larry said it too. I mean, if you don't have your health, nothing else matters. And that's what right. I love about you and Michelle is really the, the the beating heart of Paleo FX is wanting to leave a legacy right. where people's lives are changed and perhaps um, longevity is increased through what they learn through the paleo effects movement. So it's really awesome. Now, do you plan to have any vegan paleo debates again this year? Like you did <laughs> last year? That was, I yeah. I think that was the most attended, well-attended symposium you had last year. Cause people were like, man, we want to see the meat eaters and the, uh, yeah. and the herbivores, you know, duke it out. And that was a, that was a fun panel to moderate. And, and before I kicked that panel off, I told them, look, the first question I'm going to ask you guys is, what is it that we can agree on, right? I want everybody right. on stage to agree on one or two central points and then we can go from that. And that is, you know, if we could do that as a nation <laughs> about, about everything, can we yeah. come together and agree on two points? Now we might have to chunk up pretty high to get there, but once you start from a point of, okay, yeah, there is something that you and I can agree on. Yeah. That's a much better starting point than, then duke you know starting to duke it out in the in the trenches on the minutia um but oh, I, agree with you. I feel like i feel like everything out there right now you know it's 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 male versus female red versus blue trump versus biden uh 
you know, uh, LGBTQ versus straight, black versus white. I mean, right. I, you know, somebody said this great analogy the other day about if you take, you know, for example, black ants and red ants out in the desert, the Southwest desert, they, they live in harmony. Everything's right. great, but you throw them in a jar and you shake it up and you dump them back out on the ground, they'll fight till they kill each other. Yes. And you know, my question has been since the beginning is who's shaking the jar, right? Yes. If we could all come together and just start off, because I thought that was a great question to kick off the vegan um, paleo debate is what do we agree upon? Let's start there on what we agree upon. And, um, you know, because whatever you focus on expands, right? I think yep. Einstein said that. Yep. And so if we focus on what we don't agree on, that's just going to get bigger. But maybe if we can take some of these things, um, you know, and, and, and come together in unity, that'd be huge. So who knows, maybe even paleo effects will heal not only that little community on November 14th, but the whole world. You know, that's, we, we don't, uh, we don't shoot low. We swing for the fences. And so, yeah, I mean, we, we do think that the world can change through health and wellness. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you start there, like you say, and this, this is an NLP turn, chunk up, chunk up, chunk up until yeah. you find something that you agree on, then you can start to have a discussion with somebody who prior you would have thought was a mortal enemy. Yeah. Um, oh, there's a trainer uh, I work out with at my gym and, he and I voted for different people. We're kind of on do opposite ends of the spectrum politically, but we adore each other and he's a leadership coach and we just love each other. And so we keep saying we're going to do a live together eventually about that. But that's what we were talking about because there's so many things that we do agree upon that we're, that we're, that we're for, you know, that we're both for. And, um, you know, and he and I both were just kind of sitting back laughing at all the craziness going on out there. And we were like, you know, that's what makes our country great is that we can have a difference of opinion or a difference of approach. But that's usually not where we land. We land on what we agree upon. And so that's huge. That's huge. Now, um, I'll, have to, I'll have to talk to Michelle about this because I don't know where she is with him right now. But I don't know if you've heard of Theo Wilson. No, I haven't. If not, Google Theo Wilson TED Talk. So Theo Wilson is a uh, is a black gentleman who very, very long story short black gentleman who infiltrated, um, oh God, what was it he infiltrated? It was a, a white supremacist group and I can't remember the name of it right now, but anyway, he infiltrated this group online, created yeah. this fake persona because he wanted to understand, he's like, why is there so much hate? He wanted to understand what was going on. That would be yeah. hard. I would be, um, yes, it it down, because I would not be wanting to understand you know, I'd just be looking at them right. going, and those people are lost, you know? And long story short, he came to see, so everybody has an internal representation. They take in information from the world and they create an internal representation of what they think the world is. So he came to understand what their internal representation was. And he's like, oh, well, I can see why they would be. I, I can see why they're acting that way. Their internal representation is all screwed up. What if I had a conversation with them? I wonder if I could change their mind. And guess what? He did. He actually wow. had face to face conversations with many of these people and changed their mind. Wow. That is so, an awesome, awesome, awesome story. So awesome. that is that is the power of actually speaking to somebody, chunking up, finding a commonality, and coming to terms with people. Every at the end of the day, we all love everybody. I mean, it's in it's in the human nature's heart to love. I think way I over and above hate, way over and above hate. Oh yeah, love is way more powerful than hate. Right. So yeah. if you can chunk up to that point and find something that you agree on, you can then begin to see the other person in the holy light that they that shines forth from them. And you might not ever agree on the minutia, just like your friend at the at, at the uh, where the was gym. It? at the That's gym. Right. Yeah. You might not ever agree on the minutia, but by that time, it's like, eh, who cares? Yeah. Um, so Theo, I think, and I'll have to ask Michelle, I think we have Theo for the virtual summit. Oh. I, I know he's committed. I know he's committed to the 21 um, in-person event. I don't know that he's committed to the virtual event. I'd have to check on that. But if so, he is somebody that I would definitely watch their talk because it is so very important, especially now. Yeah. Oh yeah. That would be huge right now. 
So I sure hope that 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 he'll be there. Um, okay, so we talked about maybe potentially some freebies. Is there any kind of codes or anything you can give people on tickets or you what know? You got? I will have to tag our. Um, <laughs> I will have to tag Melissa on this because I'm like, yeah. I'm pretty sure there is, and I don't know what the code is. <laughs> yeah, this uh, that's but because have, you have people. You got to contact the people. <laughs> we have people. Poor Melissa. If she could survive to the virtual event, I swear it. The, our, the people at Paleo Effects, let me just say this too. I know we're running short of time. The people that we have working for us at Paleo FX, let me just say that we could not afford them if we paid them what they're worth. Yes. They, they work because they are so very passionate about spreading this message. Yeah. And, and what you guys do health, yeah. health. Yeah. You know, we've said it over and over, but health as well. I mean, it really, yeah. and especially now, I mean, especially wow. Especially now. Yeah. Especially now. All right. Well, awesome. So any closing words, we know you're going to drop maybe some codes in the comments here later uh, for everybody to tag on to and grab their tickets. Um, you guys can see at the ticker at the bottom, you want to go to paleoeffects.com forward slash virtual to get your tickets for the November 14th event. That's uh, next Saturday. Next Saturday. Next oh, Saturday. I know that. One other thing. So not only are there going to be speakers at this event, but you're going to have a virtual floor, a virtual expo floor. So you'll get to go and take a virtual tour of, you know, all the, the exhibitors that we had at the live event. They'll have virtual booths there. So you can go in, ask wow. questions. Wow. Now that is that, that is killing it. Right there. That is That's killing it. And I'm pretty sure that many of them are going to have freebies too. Just yeah. so that you'll have to come into the, you'll have to come into the event. Oh, well, then I'm definitely going to be there because I'm used to getting my freebies from right? the vendors there and coming home with my bag full of goodies that I dump out. And then all my kids and my husband, they steal it all. So <laughs> just saying. All right. Well, um, we're bumping up on almost an hour. Keith, it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure to have you on. Um, I just adore you and Michelle and I, I hope everybody will tune in on Monday because I'm definitely going to be um, chatting with his beautiful wife, Michelle, who, uh, goodness gracious, I mean, she's one of my best friends. So, so uh, it's going to be crazy talking business. So we might have a lot of fun while we're doing that. I'm sure you, you may know. Wanna, yeah. So you may want to tune in. Um, any closing thoughts, Keith, before I take us out? You know, Jennifer, thank you very much for, for doing this, for having me on. Um, I adore you as well. You are a rock star. You always shine the light on other people. And um, really, really, you should have the spotlight shown on you all the time because you Aww. do change the world too. I love and adore you. I love and adore you. Mwah, mwah. And that's it for Killing It Collective. We appreciate you guys coming in on this Friday and we will see you uh, on you should, Monday. You should play your video as I am. Record. I am. I'm getting good at this stuff. So check <laughs> the new video out. Bye-bye. <laughs>